Hello everyone, welcome back to JD Mods. In today's video we are going to be doing some tuning on my Aristo. Basically it has a little idle issue and I thought what a better way to teach you guys a little bit about tuning to take you through the process with me. Now by no means am I a professional tuner or anything. I just thought I would share with you guys my experiences and a few tips and tricks. And if you guys like these video series be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I can make more in-depth tuning videos, maybe even some road tuning for boost videos. And anyway, let's just go ahead and get to the video. A quick intro if you're new to the channel. This is my GS300, which we're going to be working on today. Uh, it has a ECU Masters EMU or EMU standalone computer system uh, for the manual swapped uh, 2JZ in here. Um, I'll go over this one more in detail since it's the one we're going to be working on today. Uh, this here is my K24. 2002 EP3 Civic. Uh, it is of course running K-Pro, which is as close to a standalone as you can get, and is re relatively well priced and easy to tune. And also on the topic of K-Pro, not these cars, but Ali's RSX over here is running a K-Pro as well. It for now anyway is a K20A3 with a turbocharger on it, and so the RSX and the Civic are running K-Pro. And mine is running a full standalone EMU. Alright, so here we are inside my Lexus. Uh, I like to call it the Aristo because it basically is an Aristo. So if you hear me call it an Aristo, I'm kind of lying because it's actually left hand drive. But it might as well be an Aristo because it has the motor, body trim, everything else you can think of. Anyway, so here's where I do most of my tuning. I'll give you guys a quick show around the interior. I haven't shown you guys too many shots in other videos. I just have a replica eBay steering wheel with a quick release nothing fancy but I like it better than the big old boat steering wheel that these come with I've um, got a few gauges up here that can help with tuning we have water temperature oil temperature oil pressure they're not wired in yet but it doesn't matter because I can use the sensors on my data log on my laptop then quick center console I have fuel pump switch two unassigned switches for now I have my boost gauge which is also an electronic boost controller and I have an air fuel ratio gauge then of course my shifter from the swap and if you're wondering yes this is wrapped in gold heat tape because the swap transmission does actually get it pretty hot in here anyway so let's go ahead and explain what we're doing in today's video so there's my ECU masters EMU um, which I wired into my computer using a plug and play harness because it's nice and easy and here is the software we are working with I apologize in advance, this is going to be rather tough to film, but before we get to the actual issue, uh, I thought I would go ahead and give you guys a quick introduction to tuning software in general. So again, today's video is going to be a very basic tuning video. If you guys want to see anything else in deeper or with certain ECU, let me know. I can probably help you out. Again, I'm in no way a professional, and I don't want to give you guys any advice that ends up breaking your car, so you should always take it to a tuner. But um, hopefully you guys can learn a few things in today's video anyway. So we're going to be working on my Lexus, obviously, as I said. So there's the Honda K-Series program, and there's the ECU Masters EMU program. So let's go ahead and open that up. I already had it open, so... Oh, it's opening another one. Anyway, I'm going to actually go to the one I already had open. So this is the tune for my Aristo, as I called it up top. And the numbers don't really mean anything right now, so let's go ahead, since we are plugged into my computer, go ahead and turn the ignition switch on, not start it though. As you can see in the bottom corner, most ECUs will have a disconnected or whatever it's called, and then when the ECU does connect to the computer, it should change to connected. Still kind of waiting for it to do that here. Make sure it's plugged in over here. There you go, it says connected down at the bottom. What happened is I opened up two tabs and it was connected in the other tab, I just didn't really notice. So basically before we get to actually changing anything, let's go over some quick tables. Now of course this is the software for EMU Masters EMU, or sorry, ECU Masters EMU. Uh, basically though, every um, ECU should have similar parameters. On the left hand side you can see configuration which is where you set up everything such as your sensors 
I'll let you guys take a quick read at what they are. Anyway, so as you can see, I've already done all this, of course. Then also on the left-hand configuration tab, you have stuff like engine start, enrichments, fueling, ignition, knock sensors. Anyway, you can read. So there's all those. And really quickly running over everything else. Um, I like this setup because at the top it has all your classic things you need. So those are all different windows is what they call them for easy access to certain tables. It's kind of hard to explain without actually doing anything. So I'll just run over them quickly. But under logs, this is basically like a really complicated version of that guy right there. Where that tells you your speed and RPM, maybe fuel and coolant temperature. This tells you basically everything about your motor from RPM to MAP, throttle position sensor, intake air temperature, coolant temperature. And since we're actually plugged in, those are real live values. As you can say, see again, it says connected. It's not synced because it's not running right now. But intake air temperature, it's around minus one degree Celsius outside. Oh, don't do this to me. There you go. Coolant temperature is a little colder, which makes sense because it's water. There's my battery voltage and just a bunch of other random sensors that I've hooked up. Some I haven't hooked up, such as oil pressure, temperature, and fuel pressure. Not yet, anyway. Then basically, you can just work through all the settings like cranking, which we're going to be doing today. Triggers is for your ignition. There is your ignition table. Your fuel table, which we'll be playing with a lot today. This is also where I spend probably 90% of my tuning time on the fuel table. We might have to do some adjustments in idle today since the issue my Lexus is having is with idle. Then some extra exciting stuff that's not 100% necessary. You got your electronic boost controller, uh, extra windows, which I've used for my aftermarket vehicle speed sensor, which by the way is that little box right over there. I needed it because of my manual swap transmission with the automatic motor. Um, or you know what I mean. This is extras which I've used for analog inputs, throttle position sensor, and just a few other little parameters. Then last few things, outputs, nothing exciting, just a few outputs that you can wire up. Test, I don't really use this very much. Then log is a very exciting feature for aftermarket ECUs. It tells you basically in real time um, about as many as... Um, about as many parameters as you wish. So for example, I've programmed it to always tell me RPM, air fuel ratio, intake air temperature, throttle position sensor, fuel cut mode, uh, check engine light, idle valve duty cycle, coolant temperature, if idle control is active, and the map sensor. So we can't do much because the car is off, except I can hit the gas pedal with my foot. So I'm going to do that right now. Just go ahead and hit the gas pedal. So there you go. As you can see, the black line is throttle position sensor. So a very brief explanation is there I put my foot on the throttle and there I let it off the throttle. So I reached a maximum. Let me pause it right here. I'll show you this more when it's running briefly. But So there's when my foot was on the throttle. It was at 72% throttle. Um, what's the blue line, for example? Idle valve. So if my car was running, it would have done the idle valve a bit lower since I gave it some gas. Um, and all the other values stayed the same since my car is not actually running. So anyway, that's essentially the overview for my um, ECU Masters EMU program. Very, very basic level. Still took me about four minutes. Sorry if it was kind of confusing, but... Let's go ahead and get to the actual tuning and hopefully it makes a little more sense and is a little more interesting. So I didn't really explain what the issue I'm having is, but sometimes when I go to start it, my car will idle very lean even on cold starts. Happens more on warm starts, but we're going to see how it performs today. And based on my logs and my gauges in my car, I'm going to see if I'm going to have to adjust any idle parameters or fuel at idle. So the one thing we're going to take a look at right here is cranking fuel number one. Um, number one means the table you're on. That's a bit of a deluxe topic, but basically right now you can see we're on table set number one. You can change the table you're on based on if you're running flex fuel and maybe pump gas. 
I said never change off of table one because where I live, you can't really buy E85 that easily. Uh, because every table has like its uh, mirror or like twin brother in number two as well. But anyway, we're on number one right now because we only ever run pump gas, for example. And as you can see, the red line right there, we're about zero degrees. So it's going to give us 17 milliseconds injector opening time when we go and crank our motor. Don't know why it's having a, such a hard time focusing here. So we're going to go ahead, make sure we're in neutral, turn on my fuel pump. And let's go ahead and crank it and see what happens. So she fired up right up. So there's my stock gauges. I like where that RPM is at. My air fuel ratio gauge for a cold start, right where it should be at around 11. And now going over to that log page will look a lot more interesting now. If I hit play, it'll actually give us real time feedback on my motor. And if I put my cursor at any point on the screen, it reads the values at that certain point. So we have RPM, 1800. Um, it's a little bit off of my actual gauge, 1400 ish, 1900. So it's a little off. Looks like we're getting around the same air fuel ratios 10.7, which for a cold start, I don't really mind. Um, as it warms up, your air fuel ratio should go leaner until it averages about 14.7 at operating temperature. But as you can see from my stock gauge, I'm still below the cold mark. And from my log, coolant is the kind of purpley color right here. It says we're at, at about 17, or sorry, zero degrees. Uh, the 19 and 20 is actually intake air temperature. Um, little background, my intake air temperature sensor is inside my manifold. So it thinks it's 24 and rising outside, but that's just because my motor is running. Uh, it's only around 15 degrees Celsius outside right now. But that's an example of a parameter I might have to fix because it's looking at a table for 30 degrees Celsius when really it's not even close to that hot outside. Oh, the good news is I think I'm reading that backwards. Blue is coolant, brown's intake. Okay, so sorry about that. This is actually good news. I was getting worried when it was reading 40. That'd be like a broken sensor. So essentially that 40 degrees is my coolant temperature heating up. And then the one below it shouldn't be changing because it's not getting hotter outside. But as you can see, it just went up one degree just from being mounted on my engine. As we warm up, my air fuel ratios are slowly getting a little bit leaner. Leaner, by the way, means higher if you didn't know that because it's a mixture of air over fuel. So the more air you have, the larger the ratio will be. Um, so I won't make you stare at me idling, but I'm basically gonna idle it until we're up to operating temperature, and then I'll show you guys how it's idling. So as you can see, we're getting closer to uh, 12. It just keeps flickering around there. I have the tune set to be a little more rich than it has to be right now, because rich is a lot safer than lean. Here we are over on my main screen I'm always on. This is my fuel screen like I was saying. So here's my tuning display. Coolant's at 77 degrees. The intake air says it's around three degrees. Um, and then there's just a few more values you can look at there. Now basically this is the main table I like to use to tune. It's hard to tune ignition on the road so we're gonna be talking about fuel mostly in this video and potentially future videos. But basically as you can see here, this table is just a a graph of map sensor load in kilopascals to RPM, in RPM of course. So right now basically I have follow cursor on which basically follows exactly where the motor is right now and kind of averages the cells around it. So those are the VE uh, values I've inserted. It's really hard to explain what the term VE means. It's volumetric efficiency, basically a big old ratio of how much fuel your motor should be getting. So as you can see, there's a 46, 54, 52, and 56. And the computer kind of averages that out to get around 52% VE. Now, as you can see, it's still pretty rich, but we're not quite at operating temperature. Uh, about 10 more degrees and we should be there. About 90 is what I like to be at idle. 
even though with this bigger motor and turbo, um, I find my setup runs a little hot. Uh, anyway, I would like to be a little leaner, so let me show you guys what I'm gonna do about that. Um, so basically, what you could do is hit a shortcut like shift minus to remove fuel from the current cells you're on, but I'm gonna unfollow cursor, and you can see you want the values to be relatively close. And this one here is 46, and this one's 47, and there's higher numbers in between, which personally I don't think makes much sense. Uh, that must have just been a little error on my tuning. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 47, let's say, for example. And then above it, that 53, I'm gonna do 47 again, even though I should interpolate them. Um, so that lowered our VE by 2%, and we're now at about 12.4 air fuel ratio. Still a little rich considering we're pretty much at idle. Um, so I might go ahead and actually change the 50 cells right here, if it'll ever focus. All right, sorry, it doesn't look like it's focusing. But if I go back up here to follow cursor, there you go. You can see the, the difference on the left and right is pretty big. We got 46, 47, then 52 and 56, which is pretty high for idle. I just sometimes have to change it because of certain parameters. So let's change that 56 to maybe a 54. Yeah, that changed a little bit. And maybe if we change this one from a 52 to a 49, now we're idling around 12.8, which I actually quite like, considering we're at my standard uh, coolant and intake air temperature for idling. Now, before I finish off this video, let's go over to idle. This is another interesting table. You can see different parameters. Right now, there's our coolant temperature. Um, the idle reference should be about 950. We're right about there, just under 1,000. And we have a few more tables like that. And I'm just gonna finish off by going off to log here. And we can take a look at a few parameters. Um, the one I'm looking for right now specifically is the idle valve duty cycle. You can see it's at around 42%, because the other option to taking away fuel is of course adding more air. So at 41%, if we're looking a little rich, I can potentially go over to idle. Um, idle reference table, it's at about 19, uh, must be a different table I'm supposed to be looking for here, but you can see how there's lots of stuff to try and look for, I'm obviously just learning as I go, that's not the one I want, but anyway, um, turns out my car actually right now is idling pretty good, but this is basically the essentials for tuning, it's kind of hard to make a single video about everything, so I thought I'd just give you guys a basic overview on uh, what I like to do to tune my car. But I do tons of road tuning uh, with my girlfriend sitting in the passenger seat helping me out watching my AFRs and my boost gauge. But yeah, if you guys want to see any more videos, I want to stop this one here before it gets a little bit too long. Let me know. Even though I only have a EMU and a K-Pro, um, the techniques are still valid across a lot of platforms. So please be sure to let me know if you guys want to see more tuning videos and what part of the tuning you want to see because there's obviously hours worth of content in this or if you prefer to see different type of videos let us know as well. Uh, as always thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe and uh, yes thanks for watching.